Hey there, welcome back to Dimension Quest. Now, it's been a while since I played around with UTM because um, I just haven't had any need for it. The only reason I'm even pulling it up today is because one of my viewers has requested a new video talking about a new feature that was just released with UTM 4.5.0. Now, UTM does have 4.5.2, which is what I've already installed here. I did update my system from that older release from last year that I had done single video on. Now, this particular release has a special feature that allows for remote control from an iOS device. We can see here it was released in 4.5, UTM remote server for Mac OS. Um, you can enable UTM server from the new option on the home screen window UTM server. Once enabled, you can stream QEMU backend VMs to supported clients. Now, what we see here appears at this time to be the only documentation on this whatsoever. That's not ideal. I did take a look at the GitHub repo to see if there was any additional information there. Um, really, the only thing I saw over there was a comment about somebody trying to run the UTM remote client for iOS on their Mac Studio. So, yeah, that's, that's insufficient documentation for people to get this thing set up and working. Now, let's take a look at what we can do here. Now, first of all, if you're not familiar with UTM, it is a free open source software that allows you to run operating systems on your Mac, whether it's Intel or Apple Silicon. Um, you have a variety of OSs that you can choose from. It's a decent uh, option if you don't have commercial software like Parallels or VMware Fusion. So I do have this installed and let's go ahead and get rolling with this. So I'm going to minimize the browser out of the way here. And we will take a look at UTM. So first of all, we can see here that I have two guest OSs already set up. I've done these in previous videos. I've got a Fedora 36 and an old uh, Ubuntu Jammy desktop. So neither of these are powered on right now. What I want to do here is I want to go into UTM settings. And I want to set this to automatically start UTM server. So we'll do that. Now, with regards to connections, all right, if you don't want to require a password, that is fine as long as it's local area network only. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to do this in a business environment. For a home environment where you're the only person working there, that might be acceptable to you. Um, I would still require a password if it were me. Now, you can see that as soon as I checked that box, a password was generated here, about 32 characters, it's a mix of uppercase, lowercase letters, as well as some numbers. So let's go ahead and delete that, uncheck that. Now, with this current setup here, this would be local area network access only with no password. What if I wanted to allow somebody outside of my network to be able to access it? Then I need to click this little checkbox here and watch what happens when I click the checkbox. Number one, it set the port. The default port for this app is 21589. And you can see that the option to require a password is grayed out and checked, meaning you must use a password if you want external clients to be able to access your environment. And we can see here that a new password has been generated. So this is good. Now, I'm not going to make any changes to any of the other stuff here because I'm just not that familiar with this. And I will close that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually turn the server on. So let's click on this server here. Welcome to UTM server. We can see here that there are no clients connected and the current status of the server is stopped. So let's go ahead and enable UTM server. Okay, and we can see down here that it has retrieved my external IP address and it's showing that the service is listening on port 21589. All right, let's switch over to view my iPad. All right, let's click that over there. Great. So here on the iPad, I've gone into the App Store and I've searched for UTM Remote. We can see it right here. Let's take a look at that. And this is definitely what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and download that and install it. Okay, so once that's installed, tap on Open. And it wants to be able to connect to your local network to find other devices. So we want to allow that. 
and we can see here that it has found our MacBook Pro. Now, this only is for your local area networks, and it did need permission to do that. Now, if I tap on that MacBook Pro, it's going to say, hey, this host isn't trusted. Um, you need to verify the fingerprints. So we'll tap on OK, and then we'll tap on Trust. So when I hit Trust, it's reading in that fingerprint, and it's adding it to its own little trust store. OK, so when you try to trust, it's going to establish a connection over to the UTM server, and we need to switch back over to the UTM server in order to approve that client. So let's go ahead and hide my iPad for a moment. And if we take a look at our enable UTM window here, we can see that a new client is trying to connect and we need to approve it. So we'll tap on approve and it says connected. So let's bring the iPad back into view. And we can see here that it is prompting us for the password. So now we need to get that big 32 character password over into our remote device. Now, fortunately with iOS devices, it does um, allow you to copy and paste from one system to another. So let's see if that's working between my MacBook Pro and the iPad. So we'll go back over to UTM and we'll go into the UTM settings, go to server and we'll copy that password. Copy. Now let's switch back over to the iPad again and let's see if that paste works here. Oh, that looks like it worked. We'll tap on return. And I want to save that password and connect. OK, so what's new? The wizard now allows you to create a VM easily with a floppy boot image. OK, I'm just going to tap on continue here. So we can see that I have the two VMs listed there that were already imported. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tap on the Jammy desktop. I'm going to tap that little play button there. All right, we can see the console has loaded there and it's starting the, the boot. Now you'll notice a little left arrow at the top right corner there. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the screen and then tap on that to expand it. So this gives us the ability to pause the VM, to power it off and to do a variety of other things, including access the keyboard. So if I tap access keyboard again, it'll go away. Or if I tap the little down arrow on the far right hand top part of the keyboard, it'll also minimize it. So we can see now that I have my Ubuntu desktop running over on my iPad. Great. So let's come back over to the UTM interface on the Mac. So let's just hide the iPad for a moment. Come over here to UTM. And if I tap on this jammy desktop, I don't have access to the console. Now scrolling down, I have pretty limited details here, just shared directory, details about the VM, but um, I, I, can't, I can't access the console. Now if I right click here, I can stop the VM, I can clone it, I can do new from templates, I can do show and finder, a variety of stuff. I'm not a fan of not being able to access the console here locally when it's open remotely or when it's been powered on remotely. So let's switch back over to the iPad. And let's see here, what can we do? How do I disconnect from this thing? All right, so if I select power off and what if I just log out? I'm gonna leave the VM running, but I'm gonna just log out of it. Okay, and tap. Okay, there we go. I'm logged out of it. So how do I get out of this screen? Let's try this little double window next to the uh, keyboard. Current window, none. Okay, there's not an obvious way for me to get out of this particular console and return back to the VM list. This is a bit annoying. Switch back over to the login console. Yep. Um, okay, the little expand arrows don't seem to do anything. 
No, we don't need to do anything with the shared disk. What's that? Are you sure you want to reset this VM? Hmm. Well, ideally, I'd like to be able to disconnect from the VM without resetting it. Well, that's a little bit on the annoying side. So I'm using my fingers right now to pinch and zoom and shrink the, uh, the screen there. I don't see... Yeah, I really don't see any way of getting disconnected from this thing and returning to the, the console list. So if anybody from the UTM team sees this video, this needs to be more obvious. How can we get out of a console and back to a particular VM? Because we don't want to have to power off or reset the VM in order to get kicked out of the console. We should have a, an obvious way to exit out, right? I, I just am not seeing anything here. Yeah, this is annoying. So I'm going to swipe up from the bottom of my screen and close out UTM, and then I'm going to reopen it. All right, so I've reconnected back over to UTM, and we can see that uh, Fedora is still powered off. I still have a variety of things that I can do on the right-hand side. I'm going to minimize the iPad view for a moment. Let's go back over to our Mac OS, and I'm going to click over. We can see I've got a, a console there for the Fedora. You can see it's in portrait mode from when I had tested this the other day with my iPhone. I'm going to click back over to Jammy. So even though I've logged out of the Ubuntu desktop from the iPad, I still am unable to access the console. This, this is really not ideal. UTM folks need to take a look at this. So let's try the other way. What people would typically want to do is have a VM running, a server running in their home environment, which they would want to access remotely, right? So typical thinking would be, okay, load up your VMs, get it powered on so that it's running full time all the time. And as a remote worker or someone that's on holiday traveling, maybe you want to connect back in and be able to access your running machine. So what I would expect is the ability to have this turned on and running. We'll just leave it at the login prompt there and close that window. No, th that did not just close the window. That actually turned off the VM. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'm. see, this is why I, I haven't touched UTM since the last time I tested with it. So I'll just minimize UTM. And now I will bring my iPad back into the foreground. And we can see that the little play button is gone from Fedora. So if I tap on it, am I able to access the console at all? So you can't see this, but I am trying to tap in the middle there where it has my login and it's doing nothing. So we've stepped through the process of enabling UTM remote connections, and we have successfully connected via local area network from my iPad to the UTM server. We were able to access a console. Um, as long as it hadn't been powered on yet, we were able to access a console. Anything that's already powered on on the UTM side, you simply can't access. I'm going to switch back over to the Jammy desktop. It uh, is appearing as powered off on the iPad, but at least I've got the little play button. So let's go ahead and click that play. That's instantly giving me access back over to the console. This time I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. So we can see the desktop there. Let's uh, bring up the keyboard. And let's put in our password. And return. Okay, so we have our desktop up and running. Now, a behavior that I saw on my iPhone, and I want to verify whether or not it's an issue here on the iPad, is when I changed from landscape mode to portrait or from portrait to landscape, the UTM client would essentially log me out or prompt me for a new login. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my iPad right now, and I'm going to turn it into portrait mode to see if the same thing happens. Okay, this is a good sign. So it looks like the UTM client on iPad works a little bit better than it does on iPhone. That, that's great. 
Um, we are still lacking the ability, though, as far as I can tell, to get out of the console and just leave the VM running while we look at our list. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I think that's about as much as I can do with this particular version of UTM. It looks like it has progressed a bit since the last time I had looked at it, but I, I just don't see this being a daily driver for me. My preference has been and still is to simply use VMware Fusion. So that should uh, wrap up today's video. I hope that I've covered everything that my viewer was hoping that I would cover in this, uh, this video. I will make one comment. This iPad that I'm using does not have LTE, so it is restricted to just Wi-Fi. But I can verify that when I switched my phone off of Wi-Fi, I was able to connect via the external IP address and port using the iOS UTM remote client. It was very, very laggy, though. Now, that lag may be a result of the protocol. It may be a result of things with the router. And most likely, it's the result of me being in another country where I have slower um, internet connection when I am roaming. That wraps up today's video on UTM remote server connections. So thanks for watching and have a great day.